Hello everyone, my name is Mary Polieri and I'm the founding director of Little Blue Society. I'm also a human animal conflict consultant. Little Blue Society was established in 1999 and we're a nonprofit public benefit organization that focuses on creating a just balance between meeting human needs and preserving the earth and its biodiversity for future generations to come. We resolve human-animal conflicts over shared use of geographical areas and resources, and we create win-win solutions for all parties concerned. We custom design short and long-term conflict resolution strategies to meet each individual situation, and we set up programs that provide training in behavioral modification called vexing. We've helped numerous counties, municipalities, communities, and private individuals nationally and internationally to permanently resolve their conflicts with wildlife. Human-animal conflicts are on the rise, not only here in the United States, but throughout the world. Unprecedented population growth and urbanization are major causes of habitat loss and fragmentation. Three things happen to wildlife when habitats are lost. They relocate. If there is somewhere comparable, they can relocate too. They die off if they cannot adjust to the changes we make in their environment, or they adapt by learning to live closer to us. One of the most successful animals that have made that transition is the coyote, Canis latrans. Coyotes are currently found in growing numbers of cities and suburbs throughout North America. Studies have shown that although they utilize small patches of habitat, such as parks, highway easements, and sometimes our own properties, if we have adequate cover in our backyards, they still rely on natural areas to hunt. Now, most encounters with coyotes are sightings. This can happen during any time of the day. Coyotes are diurnal meaning although they may be more active during dusk and dawn, they are out and about during daylight hours. This doesn't mean that they're sick or rabid or that there is anything unnatural about their behavior. Studies have shown that coyotes avoid human-related areas and areas of high human activity. In order to do this, coyotes may sometimes change their activities to strictly nighttime hours when we are not out and about in order to avoid us. Now, the vast majority of coyote conflicts happen with our pets. When coyotes move through our neighborhoods, they may incidentally and opportunistically forage on free roaming cats, unattended small pets, or have territorial disputes with our dogs. Studies done on 1,400 coyote scats collected from dense residential neighborhoods in Cook County, Illinois, revealed that rodents, rabbits, and fruit were their most common foods, while human-related food sources made up only 1.9% of their diet. Even in heavily urbanized areas of Southern California, only 25% of the coyotes' diet comprised of human food sources. Now, this shows that even coyotes living in urban areas do not become conditioned to human food sources nor do they actively seek it out. It's only in times of natural prey scarcity or drought conditions that coyotes will expand their foraging range closer to our properties, and they will take advantage of what they find there. In order to minimize conflicts with coyotes, we must be able to anticipate and predict to some degree their behavior and how it changes with various environmental factors. This will guide us on making the appropriate changes to our personal habits and our properties. Some people still believe that trapping and killing coyotes is an effective solution. We know it doesn't work. For 200 years, we have tried to eliminate or suppress their population through bounties, poisons, trappings, aerial shooting, all lethal control.
but it has done nothing to reduce livestock predation and to bring human coyote conflicts under control. You would need to consistently kill around 70% of the breeding population or greater to achieve some reduction in numbers. Not only is this impossible, the results would be temporary. When conflicts do occur, the knee-jerk reaction of any community is to remove the offending coyotes. But most times, the wrong coyotes are killed. Removal simply gives the appearance that something immediate is being done. But when coyotes are trapped and destroyed, you are making more problems for yourself and others. Because when you remove a number of coyotes from an area, it creates a vacuum and other coyotes known as transients or floaters will move in to fill that vacancy and start breeding. And because of the increased ratio of available food per coyote, more of the pups from these litters will survive, whereas under natural conditions, pup survivability is much lower. The coyote family unit is made up of the alpha pair, the yearling pups from the last season called betas, and the most recently born pups. The only coyotes that breed are the alpha pair. All others are known as being behaviorally sterile. They do not breed. Studies that Dr. Robert Crabtree has done for the past 20 years on exploited and unexploited coyote populations show that when you start killing adult-sized coyotes, the surviving coyotes will start breeding at a younger age with the birth rate tripling. And with only a few adults left to feed the resultant larger litters, the adults come under extreme pressure to find food for the pups. These are the times that coyotes are forced to seek out novel forms of food that they would not ordinarily eat, such as larger game and easier sources of food such as pets and livestock. And the human-coyote conflict continues. You're most likely trapping more coyotes this year than you did last year in this area. This is not indicative of a more successful trapping program. It simply means there are more coyotes out there. And unfortunately, the more you kill, the more coyotes you will be replacing them with. So what are the management implications? The average breeding age of coyotes start at around four years old, with reproduction declining at about six years of age. This results in territories being maintained by older, non-reproducing alpha pairs, which means the number of coyotes in the area will remain stable without much growth in numbers. Studies have shown that even in removing one coyote results in a slight increase in territory with more females breeding. Quite simply, the management implication is as follows. If you want fewer coyotes, stop killing them. This needs to be a uniform regional change, not only in government policy, but in personal coyote management. Because if someone somewhere in your neighborhood is privately hiring a trapper to kill coyotes, they're creating problems not only for themselves, but for you and everyone else in your community. Because with more coyotes replacing the ones that are being removed increases the potential for more human coyote conflicts. I'm not here to put anyone out of business. We all have to make a living and to feed our families. Even trappers are needed to disperse coyotes from areas they're not wanted. So why not change the tools in the toolbox so that you're utilizing good, effective, proven science? Not doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome. If you want fewer coyotes at numbers that are tolerable to you, the cycle of killing must be broken. There are ways that are quite effective to permanently keep coyotes out of areas that doesn't require killing them. 
This has been done through use of exclusion, a combination of various deterrents and habitat and behavioral modification. Even something as simple as parking a truck in a path habitually taken by coyotes will make them change their movements. Private vertebrate management companies are springing up everywhere throughout the United States where they use non-lethal techniques to rid the area of coyotes and other wildlife. These companies are making money hand over fist and they never run out of work because this is a methodology that not only delivers results, the general public is more accepting of them. Little Blue Society helps counties, municipalities, and communities set up human coyote coexistence plans. If you're interested in setting up such a plan in your area, please contact us, and I'm happy to meet and talk with you after this presentation. We also provide training to law enforcement and animal control officers to use a technique called vexing. Vexing is an innovative behavioral modification technique that we created in 1999. It uses operant conditioning to permanently change persistent and unwanted behavior in human food conditioned coyotes and other wildlife. Vexing targets animals that eventually habituate and do not respond to simple scare tactics called hazing. If positive change is to be made, we need to understand the behavior and biological responses of the wild animals that we're trying to manage. This requires the design and implementation of management strategies that are not only based on good science, but where both human and coyote elements of the conflict are addressed. In the past 15 years that I've worked hands-on with coyotes to change their behavior, there has not been a single coyote whose behavior I have not been able to change. Thank you.